What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode this is episode number 115 and we start today's episode off by looking at our email inbox and as you can see nine players are all ready to be signed by West Bromwich Albion now of course in the last episode I did say we were going to make a signing on a pre-contract and you guys were going to choose the player and the player you guys chose was Paco Alcacer from Valencia so the Spanish forward is going to come in and again it was your decision I let you guys vote vote via a Twitter poll and again thank you very much to everyone that got involved in the Twitter poll. You'll see the results in just a second's time. Uh, Paco Alcacer won it with a very decent percentage as well. I think it was 37% in total after 521 votes which is a crazy amount and um, yeah Alcacer is going to come in next year which is cool because I've, I've never used the guy before so I'm looking forward to seeing how he does for us. I think as well he was probably the best choice too because he is on the lowest wages out of all those nine players and of course he's a striker now, of course, we don't exactly need a striker when you consider how good Niang and Lacazette are. And, of course, with Carroll on the bench, Berahino is very good as well. But it is going to beef up that area because Lacazette and Carroll are the only two proper natural strikers that are above 80. You know, Niang is actually a winger. And, obviously, Berahino is only 76 overall, which is still, obviously, very good but not, you know, amazing. So, Alcazar is just going to come in and sort of... It's just going to be a bit of extra squad depth quality. It's just, you know, it's, it's like we did in the summer transfer window, really. We didn't sign too many amazing first 11 players we sign a lot of good squad players and that's what Alcacer is going to be I'd imagine he'll be a sort of a super sub just like Andy Carroll Berahino will probably drop to, the, to be a fifth choice striker but um, yeah again thank you very much for everyone that voted it's Paco Alcacer that you guys chose if you do want to get involved in this series if you do want to make signings like this one then definitely follow me on Twitter it is at Doc Landers and um yeah, you can get involved in the series and uh, and get involved with the voting, make some signings, and that'll be good fun. I, I, I've already said a couple of times now, I definitely want to make sure we do this at least once every season, if not then once every two seasons, because it's, it's kind of fun to know that you guys get to be involved, you know, so when you're watching the series, you'll be sitting there saying, oh, we signed that play, you know, it was me that helped uh, bring that player into the club, and sort of, it makes it interactive, you know, so uh, there you go. But uh, still, we took on Wolverhampton Wanderers for the first and only game of today's episode here, away from home at Mollen. You. Uh, Wolves, of course, now back in the championship after one season in the Premier League last year. We took them on the FA Cup in the Black Country Derby, and it took us just 19 minutes for us to take the lead as well. Saido Berahino got the goal, getting on the end of a nice Andy Carroll through ball, and it was a very good finish. And as we mentioned there, you guys have chose Paco Alcacer for me to sign next year. Berahino is probably going to drop to fifth choice striker unless we sell on one of Niang, Lacazette, or Carroll because they are rated higher than Berahino. And if he does want to make sure he gets some games, time next year if he does want to make sure that he still gets into the squad for you know cup games and midweek games then he needs to score a lot of goals in this second half of this season to show me that he's still a fantastic striker and as he made it 1-0 there that was a perfect way to do it in the 24th minute Salvio was denied by a very good save by the Wolverhampton Wanderers goalkeeper there to keep the score at 1-0 and stop us from extending our lead and in the 36th minute how about this McDonald finds Edwards down the left hand side and they bring out Joe Hart Edwards crosses the ball in and the header is headed off the line by Zambrano and then the follow-up header is cleared off the line by Hart and eventually catches the rebound and that was absolutely <laughs> superb because when I was watching this I thought oh man I made a mistake bringing Joe Hart out there the ball's going to go in after this cross and Zambrano that's why I made him captain fantastic from our skipper a diving header off the line had to watch it on the replay to make sure it didn't cross the line as I thought it did but as you can see he got there just in time heads the ball away and then the follow-up header was also expertly saved by Joe Hart making up for the, uh, the error with him when I brought him out for no reason so yeah very very good from Zambrano and Hart there good to see because I did make a lot of changes for this game as you would have seen by my lineup but a couple of first team starters including Zambrano and Hart and clearly that first team quality helped us save a goal there so still 1-0 and in the 43rd minute Jordan Henderson's on the ball he finds Salvio who crosses the ball in Berahino wins the header but it goes just wide in the post and out for a goal kick and 15 minutes after the restart here, Wolves come forward and have a very good chance down this right-hand side. Doherty goes down this side, crosses the ball into the centre. Veldvik misses the header and Edward shoots, but thankfully for us, Joe Hart is on hand to make the save and we get the ball away. So still 1-0, but in the second half, Wolves were pressing, trying to grab themselves an equaliser. And again, Joe Hart was called into action here 20 minutes before the end. Very good save there, but as they push bodies forward, they're exposed at the back. And in the 71st, uh, 73rd minute, sorry, as Stearman loses out in a battle of strength 
Randy Carroll. He takes on Bath, beats him, goes to shoot, and for us, ends up uh, seeing the ball, find the back of the net. Thankfully, as the first shot was blocked there, and he just about got to the rebound. And it was a really fortunate goal. I was about to say it was a really good finish, and I remembered how the goal was scored. But it was a very fortunate goal for us there, because I tried to finesse the ball into the corner. I chose the wrong type of shot. The goalkeeper made quite a simple save, really, as it was right at him. But thankfully, it went straight back to Andy Carroll, and Carroll could not miss on the rebound. So, Wolves nil, West Bromwich Albion 2, and that is the game sealed. And, you know, Wolves were attacking, and the championship side were doing everything they could to try and grab themselves an equalising goal. But they were denied by Joe Hart on a couple of occasions and in the end it should have been 3-0 in stoppage time as well well in the 90th minute even as Carroll came forward on a 1-1 -on -one, the shot was saved and the follow up rebound shot was again saved by the goalkeeper in turn behind for a corner but it didn't matter we couldn't score a third goal because we did indeed win the game by two goals to nil so we are through to the FA Cup round of 16 absolutely delighted about that obviously it's always nice to beat our uh, rivals as well in the Black Country Derby so very nice to get the win there and again we did rest quite a few players for that game but there was still quite a lot of first team members out there too and it's because I do want to win the FA Cup this year or at least go very very far because over the past two seasons we've been very disappointing and I feel like this year with the way we've been performing in every other competition other than the Capital One Cup there's no reason we can't do very well in it but uh, still following that we uh, saw that Jack Butland is not going to come to us after Stoke rejected our um, our offer of Kim Seung Gyu a straight swap deal for him so Stoke won't they go Butland so I'm okay with that Kim is a perfectly solid backup goalkeeper he does the job and at the end of the day I just thought I'd do it just in case because you know Kim did say that with his contract over the end of the year he was considering leaving so I thought maybe just in case another big comes in for him we'll just get a backup goalkeeper tied down for a longer contract but in the end I'm fine with Kim staying here nothing wrong with him at all and Butlin can stay at Stoke and uh, transfer deadline day came and went very quickly nothing really happened we'd already done our business in January did exactly what we wanted to do that was sign a player on a pre-contract in Paco Alcacer also managed to loan out one of our young players as well to Bayern Munich of all teams but um, still we had nothing to do really the top deals were Sturridge to Bayern Munich Immobile to Inter Milan and Mandron to Southampton uh, also in Bolo that uh, very good young player on the game left from Wigan to Manchester City it's a shame I didn't look at that because I've uh, been seeing his name commented a few times he must have pretty decent potential and when I originally wanted to sign him a few years ago well a couple of seasons ago now he went from uh, Basel I think it is where he starts out to uh, Wigan and I was like that's a shame I can't sign him now because he's just left the club didn't realize he was going to go to a new club in this January transfer window possibly could have gone in for him instead but uh, still he's gone to Manchester City and uh, those are the top deals that was a full list of our transfer negotiations for the summer and January transfer window so who's come in and who's come out and and also we had two scout reports here as well from our Danish scout, I think he's Danish based in England and also our English scout which we've sent to Italy. So these are our two scouting reports. As you can see, no one really looks very good unfortunately in either of these scout reports. So we just, we continued the scouting on a few of them and we rejected a couple as well and we'll wait and see how they do. I haven't really found anyone so far other than Billy Rao and Ashley Bentley. Uh, since the beginning of the scouting that's looked too good for us but I'm confident that eventually we will pick up someone who could be the next uh, who knows Felipe Marcano but uh, still uh, following that we had a use score monthly report two players in there again very nice overall to start with for Ryan Saar but uh, the potential is still a little bit lower than I'd require usually when it comes down to me signing youth academy players I like them to have 90 to 94 potential to maximize the chances of them growing to be one of the best players in the world as I have found that usually because it takes so long to develop a youth player they might end up uh, sort of finishing their development in the 80s which is fine obviously they'll still be a world-class player but I like them to be the best of the best and also to end the episode off we have a squad report as well so you can check out how the players are doing Joe Hart up to an 86 so you know who's saying that's a bad transfer now seriously very very nice development there plus four on our goalkeeper very very decent squad progression in all the players really Wilshire has gone up by two as well Rodriguez up by two Henderson's improving too uh, also Savanier is up by two this year so desperate to see him hit 80 before the end of the season but still very nice progression regardless and the whole team looks fantastic and I really don't know what we're going to do next year if we do stay here because I don't know how on earth we can improve on this team it's just too good you know there isn't really any areas whatsoever where I'm looking at and thinking yeah we really need to shore up that area because everything is totally fine as you can see by the league table 23 games in so 15 games to go we are top of the table 19 wins four draws and zero defeats 
feet. So desperate to finish this season off unbeaten with 15 games to go. Still a long way to go, of course, but I'm still confident of doing it. And um, you never know, here's hoping we can do that. And that'll be great to do, uh, achieve another objective in this career mode just four seasons in. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode very soon.